Section 5.7, Complex Fractions. The objective here is to simplify complex fractions. We get two methods here, all right, two methods. First, the first method is to find a common denominator of the whole numerator, then find a common denominator of the whole denominator. Then what we'll do is we'll multiply the overall numerator by the reciprocal of the overall denominator. Because we know that when we divide, we multiply by the reciprocal. It's the definition of division. And then we could simplify. The other option is to find the least common denominator for all the fractions involved, and then multiply both the numerator and denominator by this least common denominator, and then simplify. And we'll see that we get the same answer for both of these methods. Okay, so we're going to do both methods for each of these problems to see how they work. The first problem here, we have a complex fraction. We'll take a look at the first method. The first method tells us to find a common denominator up top, and then a common denominator down below. Well, this is what I mean by up top. Find a common denominator up there, and here find a common denominator. So on the top, the common denominator would be 6. And the way I can get that would be to multiply by 2 over 2. That would make this x minus 2x all over 6 up top. In the bottom, the common denominator is 10. So we can multiply by 2 over 2 here, making this 2x minus 7 all over 10. Now, if we're taking a fraction and dividing it by another fraction, we remember that the definition of division is to multiply by the reciprocal. So we've got x minus 2x over 6 times 10 over 2x minus 7. Now, again, it's the reciprocal on the right-hand side here from the denominator. This is not reciprocated at all or inverted. Okay, so we divide by the reciprocal of this. Let's cross-cancel. This becomes a 3. This becomes a 5. So that means the numerator results in 5, parentheses. Now, what's x minus 2x? That's just negative x. So 5 times negative x, I can just write this as negative 5x. And in the denominator, we have a 3 times the quantity 2x minus 7. Now, we'll do the same exact problem again using the second method. And in the second method, we have to identify what the LCD is first of all the fractions involved. So I'm going to rewrite the original problem down here at the bottom so we can see what's going on. So the original, again, was x over 6 minus x over 3 all over x over 5 minus 7 over 10. And if we look at all four of these denominators, we can find a common denominator of 30. All of these values go into 30. And the second method says to multiply the overall numerator and the overall denominator by the LCD. And I can do this because now I'm really multiplying by 30 over 30, which is just 1. And what happens as a result now is I have to distribute this to both of these. When I distribute 30 to this, it becomes 30x over 6. And this becomes 30x over 3. The denominator becomes 30x over 5 minus 30 times 7 over 10. And the reason I'm showing you this is because you can see that everything cancels or reduces. I didn't want to do it all at first, but I want you to see. So this becomes just 5x. This becomes 10x. This becomes 6x. This becomes a 3 right there. And it's 3 times 7, really. So we have 5x from the first term up here. We've got a 10x here. All over 6x minus 21. Now if I continue to reduce this, I get negative 5x, and if I factor out a 3 in the denominator, I'm going to get 3 times the quantity 2x minus 7. And this is the exact same answer that we got a little while ago up here. Negative 5x over 3 times the quantity 2x minus 7. Same answer right here. Example 2 will solve both ways again. So the numerator is already done. There is no denom a common denominator needed in the numerator, so we leave it alone. But in the denominator, the only way this will work is if I multiply this fraction by x minus 3 over x minus 3, and I multiply this fraction by x plus 5 over x plus 5. Now the numerator we leave alone. Again, we have a common denominator ready. The denominator, though, is a little bit tricky. This is going to become 2x plus 10 when I distribute this 2 to both terms. There's a plus sign from right here, and this 1 gets distributed, just making it x minus 3, all over. 
Now look, the denominator here is x plus 5, x minus 3. The denominator here is x plus 5, x minus 3. So my denominators in this case are now common. And now for method 1, we remember that we can multiply by the reciprocal of this denominator. If we look at this, this is 2x plus x, making the denominator here 3x. This is 10 minus 3, making it 7. So this is what we have now before we go any further. Makes it easier to simplify it first. Okay, so now we'll take the numerator, the fraction up here, and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. Because that's the definition of division. Multiplication by the reciprocal. Alright, and now what we'll notice is that things conveniently cancel out. That entire fraction cancels, leaving behind a 1 and a 1, or that entire binomial. We can't really cancel much more, so we can leave our answer as 3 times the quantity x minus 3, all over 3x plus 7. Or we could distribute that 3, making it 3x minus 9, over 3x plus 7. Now in method 2, what we're going to do again here is we're going to find an LCD for the whole thing. So let's go back up to the original fraction. Let's rewrite this entire thing down here at the bottom now. We're going to have the entire original part, which is 3 over x plus 5, all over 2 over x minus 3, plus 1 over x plus 5. Now what you'll notice is that if you try to find a least common denominator, for all of the denominators in all of the fractions here, well the common denominator here, the terms that occur, or the factors that occur, are x plus 5 or x minus 3. These x plus 5's are the same, so it's like having the same denominator already, but this is the missing part. So what that means is that the common denominator is x minus 3, x plus 5. And those are quantities. So we have to multiply the top and the bottom by these quantities. Now be careful here. We need to remember to put like a big bracket around here so that we know to distribute this least common denominator to every term in the major denominator here. So if I were to distribute this, I'm going to see these cancel, right? Leaving behind 3 times the quantity x minus 3. Well, that already looks familiar from a previous solution. Now here though, be careful. When you distribute this the first time, the x minus 3's are going to cancel. And that's a little bit obvious. The x minus 3's cancel from here and here. So we can cross these out mentally, leaving behind 2 and the quantity x plus 5. But now when we have to distribute this again, remember now here the x minus 3 is still here. It only canceled earlier with this one. But now we're distributing this whole thing again. So x minus 5 cancels with x minus 5, leaving behind x minus 3. And as a result, what we end up getting here is 3 times the quantity x minus 3. This is our 2x plus 10, really. This is really just x minus 3. 2x and x gives us 3x. 10 minus 3 gives us 7. The same answer we got using method 1. Example 3, simplify the complex fraction. So again, another example, but now we're going to see it's an example where we have a monomial variable in the denominators. So the first method says find a common denominator. Well, it's clearly going to be x squared up top. If I multiply this by x squared over x squared, if I multiply this by x over x, all the denominators are now x squared, leaving us with x squared plus 3x plus 2, all of which comes from up here. And the denominator is just x squared now. And this is all over, that's the numerator, this is all over the next part. Well, here we have an x in the denominator, so this needs to be multiplied by x over x, making the numerator 1x plus 2, or just simply x plus 2, and the denominator is common as x. Now that we've got a fraction for the top and bottom, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So leave the original fraction alone, that's up top. We're going to multiply this by the reciprocal of the denominator, x over x plus 2. Now at first it seems like this is the only thing that cancels. But we can go ahead and try and factor this. And we can see that this factors into x plus 2, x plus 1. So this x plus 2 cancels with this x plus 2. Leaving behind x plus 1, 
over just one of these x's. Remember, there's x squared here, so this one of these x's cancels with this x, but there's left behind a 1x there still. So this is our final result. You could write this, if you want to, again, as 1 plus 1 over x by dividing x into both of these terms. Now let's solve it using method 2, which is to come up with the least common denominator. So to do that, we'll start by rewriting our original fraction. Our original fraction for this was 1 plus 3 over x plus 2 over x squared all over 1 plus 2 over x. And what we'll notice is that the least common denominator of all the fractions has to be x squared. So we multiply by x squared over x squared. Remembering to put parentheses around these because we have to remind ourselves to distribute to each term. So I'm going to distribute this x squared to all three of these. When I distribute the x squared to the 1, it just becomes x squared. When I distribute x squared to 3 over x, one of the x squared terms, because this is really x times x, cancels with this x right here. Okay, and that leaves behind just 3x, and then this x squared distributing here, you just get left behind with the 2, okay, because these x squareds cancel. In the bottom, x squared times 1 is just, again, x squared, and then x squared times 2 over x, well, this x cancels with one of these, leaving behind a 2x. And then we can say, well, let's factor this. Numerator is x plus 2, x plus 1. Denominator is x, parentheses, x plus 2. Cancel, cancel, leaving behind the exact answer we got earlier of x plus 1 over x. Example 4 says to simplify. We have to remember here what our negative exponents really mean. So we have to start by writing this entire fraction as 1 over r cubed plus 1 over s cubed all over 1 over r plus 1 over s. Now we'll begin to use both methods on this fraction. So what we'll say first is to use method 1, find a common denominator up top and a common denominator down below. So here I need to multiply by s cubed over s cubed. Here multiply by r cubed over r cubed. That makes your numerators s cubed plus r cubed. Again, that comes from up here. All over a common denominator of s cubed times r cubed. Now in the bottom, we're going to multiply this by s over s and this by r over r. Making the numerator s plus r over the denominator of simply common denominator sr. Now we can take this and take the numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. We'll see that this becomes squared and this becomes squared and these cancel. And the tricky part here is to remember that this is the sum of cubes. So this factors into s plus r parentheses s squared minus sr plus r squared. So that's gone. And now what we'll see is that this s plus r cancels with this s plus r. Leaving behind the quadratic up top all over s squared r squared. Now let's take a look at the solution if we use method 2. And we have to rewrite that original problem still. So we'll go into the part where we already wrote it as fractions at least. 1 over r cubed plus 1 over s cubed all over 1 over r plus 1 over s. Now here it's easy to identify the LCD as just r cubed s cubed because we see that there's an r cubed and an s cubed at least in most of the denominators here. So for the entire thing that would be the LCD. So let's multiply it by that. We have to remember to distribute. Distribute here, distribute here. In the numerator when I distribute r cubed s cubed 1 over r cubed, these r cubes cancel. Okay, those r cubes cancel each other, leaving behind just s cubed. But now I distribute this whole thing to this part, now the s cubes cancel, leaving behind only the r cubed. In the denominator, when I distribute it, one of them are going to cancel every time, so this r cancels with one of these, making this squared, making that r squared s cubed. And then this is going to cancel this s with one of these, making this r cubed s squared. Now what we'll notice next is in the numerator we can write this as different or sum of cubes s plus r parentheses s squared minus sr plus r squared and in the denominator we can factor out r squared s squared simply leaving behind s plus r. We'll see that these cancel one another and we have our final solution of s squared minus sr plus r squared all over r squared s squared. 
In example 5, we're asked to express the composition f of f of x as a single simplified fraction. So remembering that when you say f of f of x, it means take f, and instead of x, plug in whatever f of x is. So this is what we're doing now. So this means that we're taking this wherever we see an x here and replacing it with this quantity. That's there, and that's it over here. Okay, and then the 1 gets carried down over there. So now we see how this is a complex fraction. So we can find a common denominator of top and bottom, okay, separately. The top we can leave alone. The denominator, I should multiply this by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So this part becomes x over x plus 1 plus x plus 1 over x plus 1, which as a result is x over x plus 1 all over 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now, we can multiply by the reciprocal, but you could also notice that both denominators are x plus 1. So they cancel each other out, but I'll show that. So multiplying by the reciprocal, we take the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator, and we'll see that they clearly cancel. So we could have just canceled them right here, leaving behind x over 2x plus 1, which is the same thing here, x over 2x plus 1, over the quantity 2x plus 1. Now let's go ahead and solve this using the second method by finding a common denominator for the whole fraction and multiplying the top and bottom by that. So start by writing it again as x over x plus 1 all over x over x plus 1 plus 1. Now the LCD here is just x plus 1 because it's the only denominator that there is. So we'll multiply this by x plus 1 over x plus 1. Remembering to distribute it here but up top these just cancel leaving the top to be just x. In the bottom I have to remember to distribute this well, when it distributes over here to this part, the x plus 1's cancel, leaving behind just x right there, right? This would cancel with this portion right here. But now when I distribute this x plus 1 here, it just becomes x plus 1. So in the end, you get x over the quantity 2x plus 1. The same answer we got from method 1.